Hello everyone, in this tutorial I am going to talk about multivariate d square statistics which was originally proposed in the year 1928 by this person known as Prasan Chandra Mahananobis who we refer as the father of Indian statistics and his work Mahananobis distance is one of the most widely used metrics to find out how much a point diverges from a distribution based on measurements in multiple dimensions and the principle involved in this method is it transforms the variables into uncorrelated variables and this is one of the type of normalization or scaling and it makes the variance equals to 1 and then calculates the simple equilibrium distances and this is an example for variance and covariance matrix and the diagonal values are the variance and the other values are covariances here the 150 is the variance of A and 210 is the variance of B and 300 is the variance of C and minus 90 is the covariance between A and B and this is same for B and A also. Like this we need to calculate a variance and covariance matrix in our data analysis also. Then in the year 1952 this person who is from Karnataka CR Rao used the D square method for assessing genetic diversity in breeding. And Singh gave an idea about relative importance of characters affecting towards divergence. And this method has got some merits and demerits. It helps in selection of genetically divergent parents for their exploitation in hybridization program. And it measures the degree of diversification and determines relative portion of each component. And it provides reliable estimates of genetic divergence. And a large number of germplasm lines can be evaluated through this method. And the demerits are this method is unusually difficult and this is a second order statistics and the estimates are not satisfactory and the analysis is not possible from unreplicated data so if you don't have any replication means don't feel sad because i have already uploaded a video on hierarchical clustering in my youtube channel you can check that by going into my channel page and it will work for you who don't have any replications and before getting into the coding part, we need to understand these concepts univariate, bivariate and multivariate relationships. So, in univariate relationship, we study the relationship of an individual considering only one variable. Example here, the relationship between the individuals and their yield level. In bivariate relationship, we consider two variables. Suppose the relationship between the individuals with their yield level along with the plant height. So, in case of multivariate relationship, we consider more than two variables. Here we can see the dependent variables are plant yield, plant height and days to harvest. And the test we do for univariate analysis is ANOVA. And in case of bivariate and multivariate analysis, we use MANOVA. MANOVA stands for Multivariate Analysis of Variance. So let's get into the coding part. Friends, after your analysis, don't leave me behind. Do subscribe to my channel because each and every line of code what you execute takes me days together to learn on my own. Keeping all these things aside, if in the R studio, if the text is not visible, please do increase the resolution of your video. Let's start with the new script. The package which I'm going to use in this analysis is known as BioTools. So let us install the package from the CRAN repository. My way of installing a new package is by giving the command install.packages. Within that command, we need to mention the package name biotools within double inverted commas. And the other way around is by selecting the packages and there we need to click on install. Then we need to type the package name over here biotools and then we need to select the package and click over install. But I will cancel it because I have already installed with the command. And the next thing we need to do is load the package by using the library function. Within the library function, we need to mention the name of the package, BioTools, and then we need to execute by hitting Ctrl plus Enter. Then before bringing the data set into the environment, let us have a look at it. Since I didn't have any on my data, I use one of the cotton data set which I got from the internet. So this is the data set. This was the original and we can see there are 12 genotypes 
with three replication and four characteristics. In order to calculate variance and covariance matrix, we need to arrange the data like this. You can pause the video and check how I have arranged the genotypes and replication sequentially. In the next sheet, I have taken the average of 12 genotypes from the three replications and this will be useful in calculating Mahalanobi square Euclidean distances. And we need to save this before importing into the R studio. So from the R studio, in order to import a data set, we need to click here and select from Excel. And then we need to browse where it has been stored. In my case, it has been stored in desktop and in this folder. And then we have to select the Excel file and then click on open. And it will be slightly different for Windows users. And then we need to select the sheet from where our data has been stored. And I will keep the name of the sheet as cotton only and I will click on import. And from here, we can check the structure of the data frame and then we will go to import the next data set which is stored basically in the same Excel file but in the different page and I will change the name into AVG means average and then we will import this data set into our working environment and this is the average values of 12 genotypes and the next major step is to separate the dependent variables in order to do the maneuver let's store it in dv and we need to store it as a matrix not in the format of an array or a data frame within that we need to mention our data frame be careful while mentioning the name because r is case sensitive don't mix small and capital letters and then we need to select which are the columns we want here from 3 to 6 are the dependent variables so keeping all rows select 3 to 6, 3 is to 6 and then execute this line of code and in order to check the dependent variables just type dv and execute this line and we will get our dependent variable data as an matrix. So the next step in our data analysis is to do the model of MANOVA. Let me store the model in mod and then we use the function MANOVA which is basically present in R. Inside that function, we need to select the dependent variable matrix and we have to consider the independent variables as factors. So within as.factor function, we need to select the genotypes. Be careful before selecting the name, just look at the data frame. Be careful while typing the name because R is case sensitive. So let me type genotype here. And then along with the genotype, we need to mention the replications also as a factor so after plus consider as dot factor function once again and within that we need to mention the replications so check once again in the data frame here repl capital r so mention that within the brackets and the last argument we need to pass for the manova function is data here the data set is cotton with capital C cotton and execute this line of code in order to see the table check the summary of the model and you will get the table and here we can find the degrees of freedom for the genotypes and the replications next we need to calculate the residual sum of squares we'll store it in SS using a built-in function called SSD here all the letters are in capital within that we just need to mention the model here MOD if you need to know much more about SSD function, just type question mark SSD and here we can find that it is used to estimate the variance matrix of multivariate models. If you want to look at it, just type SS and then execute. Within that, we will find the degrees of freedom and sum of squares stored. In order to get the covariance matrix, we need to divide the sum of squares with the degrees of freedom. So let us store the covariance matrix in covar, then from the SS variable, select the sum of squares which is in ssd and then divide that by the degrees of freedom they are also stored in ss only and we can look the covariance matrix typing the variable where we store the covariance matrix that is covar so the error seems to me because i have not executed the previous line so execute the previous line after that type covar and execute this in order to see the covariance matrix this is the covariance matrix. From this point, we are just two steps behind completing our analysis. And the first step is 
to find the percentage contribution of each and every dependent variable. Let me store it in importance IMP in short. So the function which is used here is sync from BioTools package. Within that we need to mention the dependent variable matrix that is DV and the covariance matrix that is covar and execute this line of code and then in order to find the importance in numbers just type IMP and execute and here in the proportion you will find the percentage contribution in order to get this in percentage we can do that by plotting the importance to do just plot the importance so within the plot function type IMP and execute and you will find the percentage here in the graph so we can export it and save in the directory or in the place where we need so this is only for demo purpose I won't save it anyway just I will cancel it out and the final step in the clustering is we need to calculate the pairwise squared generalized Malanobis distance and in order to do this we need to use the average values that we are already stored in the data frame of the name AVG. I will store the distance matrix in D and the function which is used to calculate the pairwise distances is capital D2 dot dist and within this function we need to mention our average values. Before bringing the average values into this function we need to take out the first column. Why? Because the first column contains the index number of all the genotypes and we don't need this column that is the genotype column. So in the code within the big brackets we need to select rows and columns. After comma we need to enter columns that is minus one to remove the first column. Then the covariance matrix covar. Then execute this line and we will get the distance matrix stored in D. The next step is to do the clustering by torture method and the function used here is torture. Let us store the clustering in TOC. Within the torture function we need to mention the distance matrix D. Then in the talk there will be many options available for us. From that we can select the clusters to know the cluster membership. Here we can see there are six clusters out of 12 genotypes and in order to get the distance cluster we need to select dist cluster in talk so after talk add dollar symbol then click on dist cluster and this is the distance matrix here we can find the intra cluster distance of cluster 1 and this is the intra cluster distance of cluster 2 and this is the intra cluster distance of cluster 3 and so on and here we can see the intra cluster distance of 5th and 6th cluster is 0 because there are only single genotypes. Within talk the variable name where we stored our clustering we can find these many things stored in that and we can select whatever we need and this package helps us also to do clustering based on modified torture method. So for that we need to use all the steps as same as the above. Let me store it in tokem that is torture modified. So the function is the same torture. Within that we need to mention the distance matrix D. After that we need to add an additional argument algorithm and we need to select the method sequential within double inverted commas and execute this line and the rest is same as the above. So friends finally I think I have removed the torture which is involved in this torture method for free of cost. So please do subscribe and support this channel. And in order to calculate the cluster means we need to add an extra column in the excel sheet itself and mention the cluster membership of each and every genotype. And we need to sort them based on their cluster membership. Then we need to calculate the average. This is the only way because we can't use aggregate function here. And in this package I didn't find any function to plot the cluster diagram so if anyone could find it please do put it in the comment section so in this chart i have created the distance chart for eight clusters for eight clusters put eight circles and connect them in all possible combination inside the circle we need to mention the cluster membership and their intra cluster distance so this is for all the eight so 
here in the eighth cluster we don't have two or more genotypes that is why the intracluster distance is zero and here we need to mention the intercluster distance here the intercluster distance between first and the eighth cluster is 50.15 and the intercluster distance between 1 and 2 is 25 and the intercluster distance between 2 and 6 is 62 like in this combination we need to create the distance chart then in the full screen we need to take the screenshot for further work thank you